Hey everyone. Thanks for the introduction, Alvaro. Um, so just to be clear, uh, we're reverse engineering some firmware where the code has been sent to me already. So we're not like taking the firmware out of a product. We're just looking at some code. Um, and so the context is that um, I work with my friend's company and they make these like hydroponic and aquaponic kits. And so this code is from a product, which is a big box. Uh, it's a grow box. It's hydroponic, so it's got lights, uh, pump, fan, that kind of thing. And then it also has a um, LCD display where you can set like whether you want the fan to be high, medium, low, how many hours you want the light to be on per day, and so on. Um, and so we uh, we went to China to, I was in China for two weeks um, helping out with this product, and we had a lot of issues with the firmware. Um, and like trying to get it right, like we would ask for something to be fixed and it would be fixed, but there might be a regression in other stuff. Um, and eventually we asked the firmware engineer to send us the code. Um, and so I started trying to look at it to see if I could figure some stuff out myself. Um, and so the first bug that we had that I wanted to figure out, which seemed like it would be doable, is that our medium and our low fan speed, they're supposed to be different, but they were the same. Um, and so we're gonna look at the code and like see if we can figure that out. And to his credit, the firmware engineer like fixed the bug way before I had found it. So, um, yeah, cool. So this is gonna be me like on Vim in my text editor. Uh, yeah, is there a, is there a mic stand? Are you gonna be my mic stand? <laughs> I guess that works. <laughs> I've done it before. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I guess the the first place that we can start. So um, these are all the files he sent me. Um, there's so there's like lots of different types, but the ones that we're gonna look at are the C files because those are the actual like human readable code. The H files are header files, so they kind of like describe um, like the code interface. Um, and then there's a bunch of other files that we're not gonna talk about that are like compiled things. Is that is that a question? Yeah. Uh, sorry. Okay. Did the firmware engineer have known that it was broken? Uh, so we were working with a factory to get this made, and they have a firmware engineer. Yeah, well, uh, to be technically correct, they have a PCB engineer who like also <laughs> tries to write the firmware. <laughs> um, yeah, so looking at these files, um, I figured the first place to start, because you can set the fan in the um, LCD display, so I figured the first place to start would be to look at where that's happening, and then try to see if we could figure out like what, uh, what variables and stuff are holding the fan info. Um, cool, so. Um, the, so there's a there's an interface one over here, and like that looks really promising. So let's go look at that one. And if you you can actually like Google like these look like random number and letter combinations, but if you Google them, they're actually parts. So I think like this one I Googled it, and it was like a water or it was a temperature and humidity sensor, and so on. Um, but we'll start with interface. And see the code is the code is well documented. There's comments. <laughs> Yeah, um, so scrolling down, and you can start to see, this is for sure the interface, there's where you can set like the day of the week. Um, it's water temperature um, on the screen, and getting closer, so here's the main menu, you can uh, set the date, the schedule, and then LED pump fan. And uh, getting closer, LED. Uh, 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 uh. LED mode select, pump mode select, and finally fan mode select. So this looks like it. Um, we can go and translate to see <laughs> what this says. Enter the fan mode selection interface. There we go. Perfect. <laughs> so uh, you can see this. This um, is a. This is a. This is switching on the flag seven variable. And so when flag seven is equal to one, the fan mode is on high. So that, that asterisk over here is like the selection mechanism. Um, when the flag seven is equal to two, uh, the fan mode is on medium. And then when flag seven is equal to three, the fan mode is on low. So it's, it's a little bit opposite what you would expect. Um, the, the lower number is the higher setting. Um, cool, so now we know, we know flag seven is important. So uh, we're gonna get out here. We're gonna just like search for flag seven in all the code, um, and we get a bunch of stuff. So there's the interface, um, and then there's also the key file and the main file. Um, and so uh, 
I, I happen to know that the key file is for what happens when you press the keys on the display, like if you're selecting up or down. Um, so let's look at that one first. Um, cool. Flag seven. Um, I guess I want to show you something at the beginning of the key file, I think. Nope, maybe that's something else. Uh, flag seven. So we're just going to search for flag seven, see what we can find. Um, whoops. Uh, let's get back to the beginning here. I'm sorry. <laughs> Failing at Vim. Um, flag seven. Um, so here, there's something going on with flag seven, and we can translate what that says. Um, right, 24 CO2 stored in the flight fan speed flag. So uh, if you Google what 24 CO2 is, you find that it's a, uh, it's a thing that stores memory, and this memory will persist even if your device is powered off. Um, and so what's happening over here is that it's storing the value of flag seven into like a spot in the memory. Um, and so that way you can, uh, you can power off the device, power it on, and still have the same fan setting that you had before. Um, and then there's, uh, there's more flag seven over here. So uh, this flag seven seems to be getting increased. So let's like scroll up to see what's going on here. Um, so it's in this section. We're going to see what the section is. Um, add key and shift settings. So what I gather from this section is that it's uh, whenever you press the up button on the control, depending on which interface screen you're on, it changes the value of the flag. So if you're on the pump mode, it changes flag four, because that's the pump one. Um, and then there's some code here where there's only three settings for pump. So if, you, if the pump uh, setting has been increased past three, you set it back to one. So um, this is how that selection mechanism is working, because if you, if you press up past the top of the screen, it should wrap around to the bottom. Uh, yes? Uh, well, I mean, obviously the person who wrote this is not a native English speaker. <laughs> um, yeah, does that answer your question? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's like, it's not bad if interface equals pub mode, like, that's not bad for somebody who doesn't speak English, and he doesn't speak any English at all. Um, Like go through and change all the all to the like refactor it as you go along. Um. Yeah, you could, but I think I think it's good to observe the code in its natural state as well. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. So going back into the fan mode. So this is when you press the up button and you're in the fan mode screen. It's going to increase flag seven because um, it goes from low, uh, high, medium, low. Um, and it'll wrap around. So that's good. It looks like we're on the right thing as well. So here's another instance of flag seven. This time it's getting decreased. And if you scroll up, um, it is in the section, reduce key and shift settings. So this is when you press the down button. This is what's happening. Depending on the screen that you're on, it will decrease the flag, and it will make sure that it wraps around. Um, Cool. And you may be wondering, like, this looks a little bit convoluted. Um, it's, well, the, so the firmware engineer is the PCB engineer. Um, I guess we, we don't have a, like, specialized firmware engineer. This is, so he, his job is to make PCBs and to make them work, and he knows enough firmware code that he can show that his PCB works, um, but he doesn't have any formal training in software architecture or anything like that. Cool. So I think that's all the flag seven inside key.c. So now we're going to go look at main.c. There's a flag 7c, which is not the same thing. But here's our flag 7 over here. Um, and we can translate that comment. And there you go. Fan working mode selection flag. So we were correct. That's good. Um, 
and then we scroll down. I wanted to show you something. Um, so we had a lot of issues um, <laughs> when we were when we were at the factory. Um, a, di a complex part of our product is that uh, we have we have a light that's on for a certain number of hours per day. There's like three, I don't know, like you can have it 12 hours, 18 hours, or 24 hours, something like that. And then we also have a pump that you can set to water one times, two times, or three times per day. Um, but you don't want the pump to water the plant when the light is off because then it's kind of like pointless. Um, and so we wanted it so that if, uh, if the light was only on for 12 hours and your pump was watering three times, the three times that the pump was watering is uh, evenly spaced out within the time that the light is on. And so that is what we had requested. And we had, we had a lot of difficulty like making sure that this was correct. Um, and afterwards, looking at the code, I like now understand why that's the case. You can see this is a lot of if statements, um, checking a lot of alarms. Um, and so I think, I think he has if statements for all the possible cases of all the different times the pump can turn on. Um, <laughs> yeah, if you set or set. Uh, it goes on for a long time. There's actually 1,700 lines of <laughs> if statements here. Um, yeah, he, so he, he like finally got it working in the end, but now, like now looking at this, I understand like why it was so brittle and so difficult. Um, all right, so on to our quest of finding some flag sevens. Um, here's another um, thing that looks like it's for the memory. Let's see what that says. Um, power off, save data to 24 CO2. So um, again, when the thing powers off, we are saving the data. Whoops. Um, and then over here, guess what that is? It's read <laughs> instead of save. Um, yeah, and so this is probably reading the fan data from the memory when you power it on. Okay, and then now we have this part, which is elsewhere in the main. So I'm gonna translate this. It says, new 24C02 needs to be reinitialized. So um, I happen to know that we asked for factory default settings. So we wanted, for example, the fan to be low um, as a factory default. And so uh, this code must be checking if there's nothing stored in the uh, memory, then it means that the thing is being turned on for the first time. Um, and so we should set the factory defaults. So that's what this is over here. So um, the fan is set to low as a factory default, or three equals low. Um, and then I think it is saved into the, yeah, saved into the memory. Cool. And then finally, we have this. This looks very promising. Um, timer one interrupt service function. So timers, uh, timers are used for like, I guess, figuring out when to do things. Um, so uh, in general, you have, I'm, I'm gonna try my best to explain this. I'm not an expert at firmware, so if anyone wants to like correct me or anything, like definitely just raise your hand. Um, so you have a low number and you have a high number, and then the timer is counting in between those two numbers. Uh, and every time it gets to uh, zero, it, it triggers. Um, and, and then uh, every time it triggers, so that, that provides kind of like spacing between, I guess, your actions. And then every time the timer triggers, it's gonna run this code. So we have another time variable. And this time, one over here, is counting between zero and 40. Um, and you can see if flag seven is set to three, it's doing some stuff. So this is, th uh, this is likely writing to the actual fan. Um, so. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, so basically this is a, uh, this is a, like a, I think this is a 8051 microcontroller, and uh, like D3, DH1, and DH1. It is, yeah. It's a, it, it, it's a system with counter, so H1 is like the highest 8 bits. Right. And error is uh, lower, uh, 6, uh, right. lower 8 bits. So, uh, so it's like whenever the timer overflows, it uh, raises an interrupt. Mm -hmm. so Cool. Yeah. And so that's, there's also, this is like an internal interrupt, but there's also like external interrupts you can do. 
um, which is like if you press a button, then it runs. Um, yeah. Yes. What's it? It 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 is. You're right. It's an eighty five one type microprocessor. Um, cool. And so, uh, just to kind of decode what it's doing over here, it says PDMA, PDMA equals one if the time is in between zero and fourteen inclusive out of forty. Um, and so PWM is a uh, pulse width modulation, and the way that it was explained to me is that it's kind of like turning something on and off really fast. So if you want the fan to be going at 100% at high speed, um, you can have the fan um, on all the time. If you want it to go at 50%, you can turn it off and on really fast, and then it will effectively be at like half power. Um, so over here, if you take, um, if, if it's on from zero to 14 and it doesn't get past 40, then it's like 15 or 15 out of 40 times PWM equals one. So 37.5% uh, of the time it's doing PWM equals one. Um, and you would think PWM equals one means on and PWM equals zero means off, but it could be like the other way around. I think it kind of like depends. Um, so this is. If. Oh yes, sorry, thank you. Yeah, so it's PWM is equal to zero 37% of the time, and it's yet to be determined what zero means, whether it's on or off. Cool. And uh, so this is for the fan equals low, because we've determined that three <laughs> means low. And um, now if you look at the fan equals medium, um, there's, there's the bug. Uh, it's doing the same thing. So congrats, we found it. Um, and if, we, if you look at um, fan equals high, you can see that if the time is less than 40, which it is all the time, um, then PWM is set to, set to zero. So uh, if high means it's on all the time, then PWM set to zero probably means on. So in this case, zero means on, one means off. Um, and so here it is uh, on 37% of the time, uh, which, so we, we wanted something like uh, low would be 30%, medium would be like 70%-ish, and then high would be like 100%. So uh, to fix this bug, does anyone know what you would have to change? Yeah, great. <laughs> Perfect. Awesome. We did it. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> so I hope, I hope that you learned a little bit about like um, kind of uh, where products come from and like what mindset people are in when they're making products, like it's not necessarily like people who like are the best in their field doing everything. Um, everyone's human and they're like doing the best they can. So yeah, if anyone has any questions, let me know. Uh, yes, what's up? Yeah, yeah, especially with the with the LCD. Like, you could do something fancy with, like, moving the asterisks around um, and, like, not rewrite the whole screen all the time. But the, the fact that he is writing the whole screen all the time means it's really easy to read. So there's some benefits. Yeah. In the back there? Uh, is this the code that ended up actually shipping with the product? Uh, the product has not shipped yet. It's still in development. Uh, sorry, you in the front. I don't, it, would that be Unicode or something? Can the microprocessor do that? I mean, it's just to compile. It'll compile. I guess you could. <laughs> I didn't know that. Um, yes, you in the blue shirt. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, for like the key shift part. That's a cool tip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so for the key shift one, you'd have to press it, the button. It's because it's responding to like a user pressing the button, so I guess it's not as bad. Yeah. Um, I, I want to show you something else. Um, sorry. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so like in the main function, there's a main loop, right? 
Um, and like in the main here, whoops, uh, main. If you scroll down, there's actually a, uh, where is it? There's a delay like right in the main loop. Um, so like I guess that might help prevent <laughs> that problem. We, uh, looking at it, we thought it might have to do with the refresh weight of the um, display that this was there, but this is, this is another like, interesting programming artifact. Uh, <laughs> where it's, it's, uh, it's interesting because it's kind of like a stop the world. Like every time, the, the main is the part of the thing that's like looping to do all the processing, and if you have a delay in there, it's delaying all the time. Um, and so like normally you wouldn't do that, but I guess Yes, <laughs> there's a benefit <laughs> of having a delay in your main. Any other questions? Yes. Is there a strategy for being able to update this once it ships? Is there a strategy for being able to update this once it ships? Is this a one-time one only programming opportunity, or is there a, a firmware hardware remote update? Uh, there's no strategy. It is not connected to the internet. Um, I mean, I, I, I guess if there was something catastrophic and we had to update it, we could like put out the binary and like try to teach our users how to like upload the code. Um, but someone's shaking their head in the back there. Yeah, that sounds like an awful idea. <laughs> yeah, we're still in testing phases right now. Any other questions? All right, I guess it's time for the next thing. Thank you.